In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome on this Mothering Sunday. If I haven't had a chance to greet you personally, um, I, my name is Cathy. Um, I have the privilege of being vicar in this place and presiding this morning. Um, and I hope that you enjoy our service for Mothering Sunday. You should have one of these booklets with a colored cross on the front and hopefully within reach somewhere, a green hymn book. Um, if you haven't got either of those things, wave your arm about and somebody from the back will bring you one. Um, just to let you know, um, some of you may, may have already spotted that we have a new AV system installed about three, four weeks ago. Um, we are doing the sort of final debugging this morning. Um, and we have Dan here from um, the company that installed it for us. So if there's the occasional strange noise, um, the idea is that the balances are all being set today so that they never go wrong again. And if you are with us online, um, we'd love to know what you're hearing as well. And welcome to everyone. So shall we start? our worship this morning by singing our first hymn, which is number 305 in the Green Hymn Book, Love Divine or Love's Excelling. Please would you sit or kneel as Reverend Eucaria leads us in our prayers of penitence. Let us turn to God, acknowledging that we sometimes get things wrong. Your love gives us life. 
but we fail to live as your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good, but we seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, but we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Because we're in Lent, we don't sing the Gloria today. If you want to sing the Gloria again, you have to wait till Maundy Thursday when we sing it for the first time since Ash Wednesday um, at the, the service that's known as the Mass of the Last Supper. It's a very moving, lovely service. But we are now going to pray the collect for Mothering Sunday, so let us pray. God of compassion, whose Son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now please make yourselves comfortable as Marcia reads for us our Old Testament reading. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. The king of Egypt commanded all his people... Every boy that is born to the Hebrew slaves, you shall throw into the river Nile, but you shall let every girl live. A Hebrew man and woman got married, and the woman conceived and bore a son. When she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could not hide him any longer, she took a basket made of reeds and covered it with tar to make it watertight. She put the baby in it and placed it among the tall grass at the edge of the river. The baby's sister hid nearby and watched to see what would happen to him. The king's daughter came down to bathe at the river while her servants walked along the bank. Suddenly, she noticed the basket among the reeds and sent a slave woman to get it. The princess opened it and saw a baby boy. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then the baby's sister came out and asked her, Shall I go and call a Hebrew woman to act as a nurse for you? Please do, she answered. So the girl went and called the baby's own mother. The princess told her, Take this baby and nurse it for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Later, when the child was old enough, she took him to the king's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. She said to herself, I pulled him out of the water, and so I name him Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, thank you God. And thank you, Marcia. And now we're going to sing the hymn called Our Gradual Hymn, the hymn that greets the gospel reading. 
Please would you stand as we sing hymn number 323 from the Green Hymn Book, Colors of Day. be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, o Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Eukarya. May I speak, and may we all hear, in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please do sit down. Well, welcome again. It's lovely to see you all here today, and lovely to have so many young people here today. Did you know, sons and daughters who are here today, that Mothering Sunday is a festival that comes from the Middle Ages, when most children were sent to be servants in other people's houses. And on this day, also known as Refreshment Sunday, it was a lightening up of the penitential season of Lent in the run-up to Easter, and all the sons and daughters were allowed to go home to their families and to their mother church. So they would go home on this Sunday, go back to the church that they grew up in with their mum and dad, and they'd eat a cake called Simnel cake. Some of you may have Simnel cake at Easter. It's a special cake that has marzipan balls on the top of it to represent Jesus and his disciples. We do have quite a lot of cake here in church for you later. So we hope that you will be able to stay after the service and join in celebrating with cake. Mother's Day is something a bit different from Mothering Sunday. Mother's Day in the UK 
happens on the same day as Mothering Sunday. That, by the way, isn't true in every country. For example, in America, Mother's Day comes on a completely different time. But in England, or in the UK, it was decided that Mother's Day and Mothering Sunday should happen at the same time. Mother's Day is more of a secular festival. It's not got those same religious roots. And it comes from somebody who looked at what her mum was doing and said, you know what? We should have a day when we say thank you to our mums for all that they do because perhaps they don't get thanked often enough. Now, these days, and those of you who work in schools will know this, we tend not to divide parenting quite so harshly into mums and dads. We talk about, take this letter home for your carers. Acknowledging that the roles that were traditionally once upon a time mums and dads are now sometimes a bit more ambiguous than that. And everybody cares for each other in different ways. And for some people, Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday, may be a time of difficulty. My own mother is still with me. She'll be 90 this summer but I have gradually lost her over the last 10 years to Alzheimer's disease. So although I can see her, she's not there in the same way that she used to be. For some people, we may be grieving. We may be grieving for mothers that we no longer see or children that we no longer see or children that we hoped we'd have and haven't or... Mothering Sunday can be a really difficult day for some people. But, as we heard in those stories, love expresses itself in many different ways. And if church, if God, if Jesus is about anything, it's about love and love for all. In that first story we heard of Moses that Marcia read for us, we have a little vulnerable baby. And there are three people that take part in caring for this baby. There is, of course, his mom. She knows that this baby is going to be put to death if she tells anyone about him because he's a slave baby in a country that was really scared of the foreigners that were, were there and they thought were going to take over. So she looks after him for as long as she can and then places him in a basket because the ruling was that they had to be thrown in the river, but she puts him in a basket, which we now call a Moses basket, don't we? To try and keep him safe. And his sister, who was probably a little bit older than him, but not much, and so could do nothing for him except watch and hope and wait. And she's there. You have this image of her looking through the trees to see what happens to her baby brother left in this basket in the river. And someone else comes along, a princess, the pharaoh's daughter. I wonder if she maybe was unable to have children of her own. She finds the baby. The sister seizes her moment. She thinks, oh, I can do something here. She speaks up for the baby. She says, oh, would you like me to go and get someone to look after the baby for you so that you can then look after him? And she gets her own mother back. There are three people there, all caring for the person who could not care for themselves. Three different ways of caring shown to us. The person who could do what she could for him, his mom did what she could. She acted. The person who could not actually do anything because they were not in a position, but were still able to speak up for him, spoke at the right time and said, I can help. I can make something happen here. And the person who had all the wealth and the power, well, she was able to make the difference, but only because of what the other two had done. And as we think about love and loving each other and loving this world that we're called to look after and this world that seems to be in so much difficulty, there are those three ways of helping we can think about. We can volunteer to do things. 
We can make things happen. And we have a lot of lovely people who do that here in church. And many of you will know about all the things that we do. But if we can't, we're not in a position to do stuff. We can still use our voices. We can sign petitions. We can write to our MP. We can speak out for those who we see being suffering injustice. And finally, of course, if we do have wealth and power, like the Pharaoh's daughter, then we can use that to help those suffering injustice as well. So on this Mothering Sunday, when we celebrate love, mother love, in all its forms, acknowledging that it's not always easy, but it is also a time for many of great rejoicing. Let us receive the daffodils that have been so beautifully prepared for us by Jane, who's probably at the back, bell ringing or something. Um, and I'm going to ask for help from some of our younger people distributing the daffodils in a moment. But first, I'm going to bless them. Lord, may these flowers be a symbol to us of your love as the perfect parent and to us of the love we can give and receive in this world. And especially, Lord, we give thanks where we have received the love of mothers, where we can give the love of mothers, where we can care for each other in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I'm going to invite now our gospel choir, who are sitting here at the front, to come and sing for us as the flowers are distributed by some... I know, Chloe, you said you'd come. If anyone else would like to come and distribute flowers, that would be wonderful. The choir are going to sing a song that may be familiar to many of you. Um, it's familiar to me because I was a girl guide. It's called Kumbaya. Not a lot of people know that Kumbaya stands for come by here in a, in, in a different accent. Kumbaya, come by here. Lord, they will sing for us. Someone's smiling, someone's crying, someone's praying, someone's singing. Sit back, receive your daffodils, receive the blessing. Whether you're crying, laughing, praying, or singing, and listen to the prayer that the gospel choir will sing for us, Lord, come by here. Oh, 
Thank you so much. Lord, come by here. Bless each one of us today, we pray. Amen. So let us now stand and together declare our faith in the words at the top of page three. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, please, would you sit or kneel as Jill leads us in our prayers of intercession, which are prayers for each other and for the world. We lift up these prayers to you, God, and all the unspoken and spoken prayers of your people, that you may comfort and protect us all. So let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we pray today for the whole church worldwide and for all its leaders and everyone who goes to worship you wherever that may be. Help us to be caring and compassionate churches who reach out to our communities and show God's love to all. And on this Mothering Sunday, we thank you for all those who care for us, for all those in the caring professions, for ministers, especially for Reverends Kathy, Ali, and Eukarya, for all key workers and especially for those who care behind closed doors with no public recognition. We thank you for giving them all compassion, grace, and love. Lord, in your mercy. On this Mothering Sunday, we pray for new mums for mums who struggle to bring up children in uncertain times, mums in war zones where safety and protection are not a constant, for mums who have lost children or couldn't look after their own. And we pray for those who have lost mums or caregivers for whom this is an especially poignant time. Lord, in your mercy. And also on this Mothering Sunday, we give thanks for those who have stepped up to take on the role of a mother, whether they be grandparents, fathers, friends, stepfamilies, whether through foster or adoption. Father, we give thanks that all love has meaning. We are so grateful for the sacrifices and time that caregivers have given for us, for the memories they have shared and the guidance they have provided. And we pray too for families and communities who struggle to feel and share love, that they may be brought together on this day a day when we remember and celebrate love and caring in all its forms and by so many. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, on this Mothering Sunday, we take just a few moments of silence to pray for and hold up to you every single Ukrainian child forcibly abducted from their 
homes and families, and relocated in Russia. Be with them, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Father, there are so many people who are hurting physically, mentally, and spiritually. We pray for them all and especially those named on our prayer list, and mentioning specifically those who have been added recently. Holding up Angie Marshall, the Tapscott family, Angela Ingray, Colin King, and Carol Dalbeckin. And Father, we give thanks today for baby Cameron, safely home this week, a new grandson for Jane Horswell. And we pray for all those who may have passed this week, some known to us and some unknown, but all of whom are known and loved by you. And we remember, too, those whose anniversary of passing falls at this time, particularly Leslie Nash, Joan Mercer, and Grace Langridge. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, look with love and mercy, we pray, on all the very mixed emotions that run through us today. Hallow our memories. Forgive our guilt and shame, and enable us to be at peace with our feelings and thoughts. Walking from here today, refreshed, renewed, and empowered. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jill, for your Mothering Sunday prayers. And now I invite you to please stand because we're about to exchange the peace. When we've finished exchanging the peace, we'll sing our offertory hymn, which is hymn number 73, um, Lord of the Dance. If you feel like having a little jig, feel free to do so. Um, our Lord did, I'm sure. But first, we remember that the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples who thought he was dead. And he said, peace be with you. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace be, with, be you. with you. Peace be with peace you. Be with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. you are holy indeed the source of all holiness grant that by the power of the holy spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your son jesus christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. John the Evangelist Mary, the mother of Jesus, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen.
as Jesus himself taught us, so we sit or kneel to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. word before we share communion. Everyone is welcome here at the Lord's table. If you're not used to receiving communion or you'd prefer a blessing, please just let us know when you come. You will, I hope, have observed that the bread and the wine have remained covered throughout. Um, we're not currently sh drinking all from the same cup because that would not make any sense with all the current lurgies going around, including COVID. But if you would like your bread dipped in the wine before you receive it so that you receive both the bread and the wine, please just nod as you come forward to receive communion. Uh, if you need gluten-free bread, please just let us know. Um, do come. Jesus welcomes everyone. It's not me inviting you. It is our Lord Jesus Christ. If you would like prayers for healing for yourself or for anyone else, um, when you've come forward for communion or for a blessing, then um, just head towards the Lady Chapel up the ramp there where there will be people waiting to pray with you um, for whatever it is you would like to bring. Of course, if Jesus is present in all of it, then Jesus is present in each and every part of communion. So if you prefer just to receive the bread, then you are receiving the whole of communion too, which is what I'm about to do. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Loving God, as a mother feeds her children at the breast, you feed us in this sacrament with the food and drink of eternal life. Help us who have tasted your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you will notice on your order of service that it says notices at this point. I'm not going to do them at um, this point because we, um, are, we're going to have two more pieces of music in this service. So we're going to go as soon as Mark's able to get there. I'm talking to give him time to climb the very narrow stairs up to the organ loft um, because we're going to shortly sing our final hymn, which is hymn number 39 in the Green Hymn Book. Um, it's called Tell Out My Soul. Those of you who know your liturgy will know that this is a metrical version of the Magnificat, which is the song that Mary sings when she knows she's going to become a mother. So let us now stand and sing together, Tell Out My Soul. So now please do sit down because we're going to have the notices and I'm giving the notices from here for two reasons. Firstly, because as I said at the beginning of the service, we're checking out the AV system and so it behooves us to use as many different positions in church as possible and I didn't want to do the sermon from here because of obviously the daffodils being down there. Um, and secondly, because the blessing today will actually be sung by our magnificent gospel choir. But first, I want to tell you what's coming up. Um, next Saturday, we have a baptism morning. So for anyone who is interested in baptism for yourself or for a son or a daughter, come along, have a cup of tea, have a piece of cake. Next Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. 10.30 a.m. here in church. You can have a chat with us. We'll talk you through the service um, and what's involved, and you can see if you think it's something for you. 
Speaking of matters of um, baptism, um, for those who've been baptized but not confirmed, we have a confirmation service coming up in the summer on Sunday the 19th of June. I hope I've got the day, day, date right, but it's definitely the, around the 12th, 13th, 14th of June. Um, uh, when the bishop is coming to our morning service and people coming up from Holy Trinity as well, so a joint service with Holy Trinity um, with the bishop, if you would like to be confirmed, just have a chat with me again after the service or with Eucaria or any of the ministry team. Um, the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that there was, well, there were several new notices on the door this morning, but on the left-hand side of the door, there's a notice informing you that the electoral roll of St. John's is about to be revised. What that means is we've got our annual meeting coming up. Everyone's invited to our annual meeting, but if you want to be able to vote, then you need to be officially a member of the church, which means you need to be on the electoral roll. And now's your chance. We've got two weeks um, to fill in the forms um, and then you'll be on the electoral roll and able to vote as well as come to the annual meeting. Um, if I'm, I'm not going to run through every single notice because if I, if I did, we would be here all day. Um, many of you received the email that I send out. I sent one yesterday which had all the things that are coming up. We've got loads of exciting things happening in Holy Week. So in two weeks' time, for example, we've got Palm Sunday with the mayor, who we're going to get to play Pontius Pilate in the uh, Passion Reading. And um, uh, so Passion Reading, um, Procession of the Palms and so forth in two weeks' time. Um, that just starts Holy Week. If you are, would like to receive this email and currently don't, just let me know and I will add you to our email list. It tells you everything that's happening. If you're not on email but would still like to know what's happening, let me or Liz Trackheim, would you like to wave? <laughs> no. And Liz has a list of people who are not on email and she prints it out for you so that you've got a hard copy of what's coming up in the church. So Liz is confirmed that she's happy to do that for anyone extra who'd like to receive that when they arrive on a Sunday morning. Um, you'll notice I talked about a fortnight's time, Holy Week, starting in one week's time. It's a Sunday called Passion Sunday. Sandra, who you will have seen sitting on my, my right, your left, um, is who is in training to be a licensed lay minister, and we're looking forward to her and Jill being licensed in May this year. She's taking the preaching course, so she's doing her first sermon. Sandra is doing her first sermon next Sunday, and we're looking forward to that, Sandra. Um, we have quite a number of birthdays in the house today, not least the gospel choir, actually, whose first birthday it is. They sung for the first time on Mothering Sunday last year, so happy birthday to the gospel choir. But Yvonne... I gather, has a birthday today. Happy, uh, are you telling everyone how old you are? I think we all know. Sorry? Another 20 years. You'll give me 20 years. She's 81 then. <laughs> so happy birthday to Yvonne. And Chloe, where's Chloe had a birthday this week? You're giving Chloe 70 years because Chloe was 11 this week. And Mo... Are you telling us how old you are? <laughs> Mo's birthday today as well. This is part of the reason we have so many cakes after the service. Isn't that wonderful? Now, are there any other birthdays in the house before we all sing? Any birthdays this week? Elizabeth, your birthday this week. When was your birthday or when is your birthday? Coming or gone? Wednesday coming. So Elizabeth's birthday, are you telling us? I'm not sure the AV system did its right stuff. Are you telling us? What? How, old? How old? 87. 87. Wow. Congratulations. And still singing beautifully in our choir. So, Mark, I can't see you, but may you, may you play for us, please? Happy birthday. And we'll sing to Elizabeth, 
to the gospel choir, to Chloe, to Yvonne and to Mo. I don't know how we're going to get all those names in. I think we'll just say everyone. And now I'm going to invite the gospel choir to come back onto the platform because they are going to sing for us the blessing today. I think you can be very grateful that it's them singing it and not me. Um, I have to say, standing up here, I could hear the choir coming out of this speaker behind me, um, which was lovely for me. I don't know what the sound has been like for you in the church today or indeed um, those joining us online. So do please give us feedback after the service. We would be delighted to know how you felt the sound was. And so we will now have our blessing. Let us pray for God's blessing upon us and among us. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and everyone you love, living and departed, now and forevermore. Amen. Is to love and serve the Lord. In, In the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
Can everyone hear me? I forgot to notice, would you believe, you may have spotted as you came in these beautiful bags which have seeds in them. There's a, a little clay ball with English sunflower seeds because Mothering Sunday we think about planting seeds. And you may remember that last year we gave out sunflower seeds in support of Ukraine. In these little bags are some of the seeds that come from the sunflowers that were grown from last year's seeds for Ukraine. So if you'd like a little bag, um, they'll be here at the door for you to remember, and you maybe next year can bring sunflower seeds from the sunflowers you've grown, and also some English wild flowers because our bees need all the help we can give them. Thank you very much. <laughs> so would you like one, Bill? 